Hi guys, welcome to the Chelsea Skidmore Show. I'm here today with my guest, filmmaker and actress, Kansas Bowling. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> Very good. Thank you for coming. We were just talking about your trip to Europe. Yeah, I was, went to a town in Austria called Bad Gestein in the Alps that has a radioactive hot springs that is supposedly the fountain of youth and Freud and Klimt and uh, Mozart. People would bathe in the hot springs. And it would supposedly make them really horny and creative, and but also cure ailments. Oh my god, <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> I I did a it, there are radon baths. I did one, and it made me really tired. Wait, they're what baths? Radon. What is radon? They're like radioactive stuff. What is radio? Okay, have you ever heard of a show? I know you're a little young. <laughs> have you ever heard of a show called The Secret World of Alex Mack? No. Oh. It was, <laughs> it was an old Nickelodeon show. Oh, okay. <laughs> And I think she had, like, a radioactive spill, and then she had all these powers. So when you say radioactive... Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, like, trauma stuff. No, oh, the, really? Yeah. There, no, there, there are, there's radon in the water. Like, if, I don't know. If you bathe in it every day, you'll probably get cancer or something. Oh. But so it's, like, su- a special... Supposedly. I don't know. But the, the people there were like, ah, it's fine. I do it all the time. But, but there's, like, stuff online. Like, don't do it. You'll die. Was the town <laughs> particularly youthful looking? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it, you know, it checks out if it's like a hot spot for like, um, apparently Billy Wilder would always go there too. And Billy Wilder? Yeah. And okay. You're Clem. probably going to say a bunch of people's names I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Some like a hot. Oh. Seven Year Itch, you know. Oh, yeah. Director. Okay. Uh, oh. Klimt, the painter. Okay. Uh, yeah, you have to tell me who all these people are. <laughs> Freud. Yeah. You probably know Freud. Uh-huh. Mozart. Sure you know Mozart. <laughs> so they all would travel to go to this particular hot spring? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, it was, it was cool. So you just felt tired after? Yeah. Have you been to the hot springs in the desert? Um. Yes, desert hot springs near Palm Springs. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've been there. Have you heard of a place called Two Bunch Palms? No. It's really cool. I go. Is it desert? Yeah, it's in um, it's in Palm Desert. It's like this hotel that has hot springs. And it's just really relaxing and cool. Oh, I love that. I'm really obsessed with the desert. Yeah, it's where all the mafia people used to go, like Al Capone oh. and like. There's there's this town Frank I Sinatra. really want to go to called Jacumba Hot Springs, which is on the border between here and Mexico, but like not near a border entrance. So uh-huh. it's like you can't actually get to Mexico, but it's like literally right on the border. But it's like up in the mountains, so it doesn't get super hot. Uh, but it's called Jacumba Hot Springs. People go there for the hot springs, but it's also a nudist colony, mm-hmm. and it's also a UFO hotspot. Oh. Is it, <laughs> I feel like you know all these secret locations. <laughs> How do you find out about all these places? Uh, Just driving around, you know, getting mm-hmm. into trouble. I, I go to Vegas a lot because okay. I love Vegas, and I'm sort of like the expert of attractions along the way to Vegas. Too. Yes. I love all those. I, I want to, and I want to hear about them. I feel like I could tell that because I watched some of the music videos you directed. Oh, yeah. And I could tell the one, well, is that the Clown Motel one? Yeah, that one, that one's sort of my love letter to Nevada. Okay. Nevada is like my favorite state, but kind of New Jersey right now is in the running for my That's other favorite what, state. Okay, <laughs> I need to know how New Jersey could possibly be a favorite. Okay, well, I feel like Nevada and New Jersey are really similar. Yeah. Because... They're both the states right next to L.A. and New York. So it's like, you know, there's Vegas and then there's Atlantic City. Mm-hmm. The, those are those are pretty much the only ways they're really similar. But, you know, one's the desert version and one's like the forest version. But you don't really think of Jersey as like a foresty place, but it's pretty much mostly forest stuff. Well, there's like sub, you mean like the suburbs and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, it's wild. I haven't explored New Jersey as much. Because I, I, I but I, I'm, I'm starting to a lot more now. Yeah, I grew up in New York in the suburbs of New York City. So oh, like, okay. it was all woods and stuff like that. But yeah. New Jersey sucks. No. But <laughs> maybe I haven't been to where I, I love New Jersey. It's so really? Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's Do you know best. any secret attractions there? Um, well, I've been spending a lot of time in this one town called Blairstown recently, which is where. Friday the 13th was shot. They have been big Friday the 13th festivals there. Oh. Um, along the way, there's like a, a cowboy theme park. <gasps> really? <laughs> yeah. You like... know every cool place. 
been so cool. And then Atlantic City is just like the coolest. A the, cowboy theme park. I haven't been yet, but I'm going to go probably next time I'm there. Uh, I want to do a photo shoot there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there's so many of those around Nevada, too, that I know about, which are really awesome. Wow. Like Calico, Bonnie Springs, a few more. What is Bonnie Springs? Uh, Bonnie Springs is like an old western town near Vegas where they have like uh, actors walking around pretending to be cowboys to getting into like gun gunfights there's hangings stuff and like that and you like immerse yourself in the town yeah oh my god <laughs> are they volunteers the or did they get paid they probably get paid I don't oh. know <laughs> wow um, yeah but Calico's on the California side of the border but then Bonnie Springs is the one closer to Vegas did you stumble upon this stuff or did you read about it and hear about it uh, sort of both mm-hmm. recommendations too, you know. But a lot of it's sort of like stumbling. Um, I don't know. I also I can't not mention New Jersey. My favorite attraction is Lucy the Elephant. What is that? It's in Margate, the next town over from Atlantic City. Yeah, I know Margate. Yeah, and it's a uh, it's a six story house shaped like an elephant that was built in the eighteen eighties. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. cool. Okay, I'm gonna go to Vegas with my husband, and I'm gonna ask you for like a map of stops along the way. Oh, that's my favorite thing to do. I'll totally can you and and give you Vegas recommendations while you're there. Okay, actually, the girl who is just here is from Vegas. Oh, really? Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she said like the Neon Museum is cool, but you probably yeah, know much a... cooler stuff. The, 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 yeah, oh, that, not against like her, the, but the tip of the yeah. It's, there's there's so much more. What are a couple you can just shout out for the listeners? Well, the Pepper Mill is always the coolest. Which is? It's the it's a bar which has which was built I think like seventy two. There's a Pepper Mill Casino in Reno, uh, but in Vegas there's just the Pepper Mill Restaurant Bar. But it's like inside there's like fake trees and all the walls are made of like mirrors and neon and there's little fire pits. Oh, is that the diner? Yeah. Okay, I just came across that recently online, it's, it's, and that was on my list. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it looks really cool. Um, but I don't know. There are count, countless things, you know. There's just all sorts of weird stuff. <laughs> Do you like the Madonna Inn? Yeah, I love the Madonna Inn. I just got married there. Congratulations. Thank that you. I really love nice. it. Yeah, that's like, I'm trying to learn more kind of places like that <laughs> to check out. Do you ever go to those, like, themed motel rooms? Uh, have you been to the trailer park? place that has like the david lynch room and do you know what i'm talking about no fuck i forgot what it's called it starts with an h i'll look it up later okay. it's like an hour away between like here and i don't know hideaway maybe it's called hideaway motel or i'm not sure i've seen i've seen a few of those online and stuff oh yeah yeah no, i'm I'm really into cowboy stuff really so, yeah <laughs> what are other cowboy things that um well calico is the other good one um I don't know. I, another here's a here's a really good, super top secret along the way to Vegas attraction that like nobody knows about. This is a this is a very cool tip for people. Uh, there's a between Prim and Vegas. There's a town called Good Springs, which is like seven miles off the 15, um, and up in the hills over there is where Carol Lombard's plane crashed and she died, and uh. There's a saloon at the bottom, which is where Clark Gable sat and waited to hear if she survived or not, and then found out she died, and then he hiked all the way to the top of the mountain and carried her body down. Whoa. But if you're able to hike to the top of the mountain, I tried, but um, it got really dark when I got, like, halfway, and I was like, crap, <laughs> we're going to die. We have to turn around. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to go back soon. If Supposedly, if you get to the top, I've seen pictures online, there's still... The plane parts are still there. Oh, whoa, that's interesting. <laughs> so that that's really really cool. That's, yeah, that's a very fun little Nevada fact. So you grew up in LA. Yeah, in Topanga. In Topanga, okay. And you started having an interest in filmmaking from a young age. Yes. Right. Yeah. Ever ever since I like knew what a director was, I probably wanted to be one. I was always making like little movies with my sister, were your, which we still do. Were your parents in the industry? No, but my my dad really likes movies though, so mm-hmm. he would show us movies a lot. What kind of stuff did you grow up watching that you know inspired you to want to be a director? Um, he would he would show us like uh, 
he would show us more like recent cool bigger budget movies it wasn't until i was like discovering movies on my own that i found like the type that i really like now but my mm-hmm. favorite movies that he showed me growing up were like creep show and like kill bill and mars attacks yeah <laughs> <laughs> things like that which Forgot i about still mars really love mars attacks actually since we're talking about it is my favorite vegas movie really yes <laughs> wait so you went to area 51 well not that so the, you can't actually go, <laughs> yeah, I guess. You, you can't actually go to Area 51, but there's this town called Rachel, Nevada, which is the closest you can actually get to Area 51. And they have a hotel called the Alien. Oh, I've seen that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's like a little like UFO-themed restaurant. And then it, close to Rachel, there's a giant metal alien that you can stand in front of. Uh, and I think there's actually a shop just when we went. It was closed. But... Does anyone talk about UFOs in the town there? Uh, I'm or sure like they do. Stuff they've we seen. actually didn't hang out there too long, but oh, okay. I'm sure. <laughs> was it? Was there a creepy energy? Um, no, I mean, I, I, to call it a town is like it's not okay. really a town. It's more just like the hotel and restaurant. That's it. Got it. <laughs> so you started watching movies and then just wanted to be a director. And then what kind of stuff did were you more drawn to? What kind of genre or movies? Um. Probably always, like, horror, Mm -hmm. even though that's not really my main focus now. It's just, I don't know. Even now when I'm, like, sort of don't know what to watch, I always just put on a horror movie. Do you, by yourself? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's just, like, (laughs) sort of my go-to. Do you ever get scared? I know, that's a stupid question. Not really. I don't know, sort of. Actually, I don't know, kind of recently, a little more than I have uh, in a while. Mm -hmm. Just because I... I don't know. Long story. Actually, I don't want to get into that, but yeah. <laughs> Do you remember the first horror movie that you watched? Uh, no. <laughs> I think I watched The Exorcist when I was 10 with my uncle. That, and then he showed yeah. me The Omen like right after. And my mom was like, what are you showing? <laughs> <laughs> the Exorcist really scared me when I first saw it. Yeah. It scared me too. It It made me afraid of like, well, then when I would hear about actual exorcisms happening around the world, that freaked me out more than the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and just like, I don't know, there's something scary about Catholicism. Like yeah. in that. And that it's some kind of like spirit that, like, a- yeah, or just in general, like how priests are rapists and yeah, stuff. That too. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a religious just, you person. You know, religion is just really horrible in general. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I never grew up as a religious person. Yeah, neither did I. It's it's not something I, like, ever even gave thought to. So. Yeah. I mean, like, I celebrated Christmas, but. Yeah. Like, I'll take the presents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm not going to pray about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So, you started watching stuff that you liked, horror movies, and then you got a camera or you asked for a camera uh i don't know well we sort of like just made do with whatever cameras were around mm-hmm. uh like i don't know we made stuff on like mini tv cameras and then like digital little like photography cameras that like also took video mm-hmm. we take advantage of and then like the like, canons yeah the we, little we had like digi- really cheap ones that like looked horrible yeah <laughs> and, and we would, i don't know just stuff whatever we could get our hands on I used to bring our video camera with, uh, like, on family vacations and film people in the airports and, like, zoom in on someone and just, like, <laughs> voyeuristically just, like, spy on them. It was very odd. <laughs> I wish I was making more, like, movies, but I, I think I would just, like, watch just, people, like, <laughs> like very people. rear window-ish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, but you were making, like, actual little movies with yeah we would always have like little premieres with our parents oh that's fun <laughs> that's cute we did have a lot of things though we would like make force them to watch our plays yeah and our movies and sometimes we would have like art shows in the hallway mm-hmm. and we'd make them like pay a quarter to get in <laughs> <laughs> that's so cute <laughs> is your sister close to you in age yeah we're two and a half years apart okay. she lives with me now we, we're always just making weird stuff and does she do the same thing as you do essentially yeah she's actually um she just directed her first short and she's probably like a third of the way done directing a documentary feature right now oh wow that's so cool yeah she's she's doing really cool stuff there's a movie from 1967 called mondo hollywood 
which is sort of like to me it's like the quintessential like sunset strip style hollywood 60s movie it's it's like just it follows around a, a few like different hollywood eccentrics and uh they do like inner monologue narration and stuff and the director of the original one is having parker my sister direct a, a sequel a follow-up sequel 50 years later <gasps> whoa yeah so he's like presenting it with his name and she's directing it and so she's following down like current day la people that's so fucking cool yeah it's, it's and really, that's really huge awesome. and like yeah. an awesome honor yeah wow <laughs> it's it's really really cool i'm proud of her so you guys have cool name. i have or is that a real is that your real name mm-hmm. oh, yeah. okay does everyone ask you that uh sometimes yeah it's very cool yeah cool parents um yeah (laughs) yeah were they creative or um my my dad he you know dips into well my my dad's in a surf band oh really yeah surf rock (laughs) yeah like garage i love that yeah like like venture style surf band like dick dale and the deltones exactly yeah that's Um, cool they're called chum wow oh you know (laughs) what they've been together for like 19 years or something wow that's cool. Do you use some of their music in your stuff? No. Oh, he's waiting. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, hey, I can hang. <laughs> yeah. So, so you got this interest in films as a young at a young age, and then you just started like watching certain like. How did you find the stuff, or how did you know what to kind of look for? And you went, I'd say, probably to like older stuff. Um. Yeah. Um. Well, probably just all sorts of different things. I would always like buy, I would I would buy VHSs from Amoeba a lot because they're really cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, I would sell candy at school to fund my DVD VHS collection. That's so cool. <laughs> and uh, not for your basketball team. <laughs> no, <Yeah. laughs> that's what kids mostly say. I made so much money. I was just sell sour punch straws. Uh-huh. I'd get like a big bucket that had like two hundred fifty or something, and the bucket was like ten dollars, and I'd sell them each for a quarter. I can't do the math right now, but I would make a big profit. Wow. <laughs> and then you take all that and go to Amoeba? Yeah. And then sometimes what I would do is after I'd watch it, then I'd trade it in for another. And yeah, but I always say that Quentin Tarantino movies were like the gateway drug to other genres. Yeah. Old, older movies of things that I eventually got into. And- um, I Some of my favorite movies and directors I found out about because of stuff he was referencing. Mm-hmm. And you were just in his movie. Yes. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. How much fun was that? It was so fun. <laughs> How many days did you work on it? Um, well, the whole Spawn Ranch scene was like two weeks, I mm-hmm. think. Where was that? Um, it was in Simi Valley near the actual Spawn Ranch, but not exactly there. The actual Spawn Ranch has like a highway right in front of it, so that would have been really loud and yeah, be peeping people. And yeah. Was that a true story? That, um, sorry, <laughs> it's like too broad. Um, was it a true story that they took over Spawn Ranch and that, oh, yeah, the owner was like fucking one of the girls? And um, was, like, I, I don't know, old? I don't know how true that is if oh, he was okay. having sex with them, but yeah, George Spawn was there and they were taking care of him and stuff. Wow, that's so interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah, I just saw it at New Beverly Cinema. Oh, cool. Which was, like, fun to that's, obviously that's, see it there. Yeah, that's really crazy. I've been going there since I was, like, really young, so it's just it's crazy. It, that's have, the place I've been going to is, like, playing a movie that I'm in every night. That's now. so cool. <laughs> so yeah. Long. How old were you when you started going there? I think 14. Wow. Because that was when I moved back into the city from Topanga. And, mm-hmm. And, yeah. That's so cool. Um. So how did you end up getting in the movie? Uh... Well, I like, I, <laughs> I proposed to Quentin when I was fourteen. Right, tell me more, <laughs> and, I, and I would too because I, I met him, and you know, I was where'd 14. you meet him? At a, at a screening that he, just, I, I just like had a feeling he was gonna be there. I was like, Mom, you have to take me here. I know he's gonna be there. I just know it. And where he, was it? He showed up. It was a. Uh, it was at this place. I don't think it's there anymore. It was called the Proud Bird Cafe by LAX, and they were doing a screening of Jackie Brown because it's like flight attendant, like airport screening. And yeah. He showed up and yeah, and I, and I don't know. I pro- I proposed. And what'd you and do? He, I just like got on one knee. I was like, "Will you marry me?" That's and so he, cute. He thought it was really funny. And then, um, what did he say? 
<laughs> he was just like, you're too young. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, mm, okay. <sighs> and then, uh, I don't know, I, I saw him at the New Beverly Cinema a few times throughout the years. Did after. he remember you? Yeah, and he's always like... <laughs> that's that, my wife you're that girl that weirdo and uh um yeah and then when my sister and i found out that you know the movie was making a movie with manson girls we were just like that's us yeah <laughs> and we like you know went to another screening that we knew was gonna be at uh-huh and, you had the inside tip yeah and then snuck into the after party somehow and then just went up to him we're like we're manson girls and he's like yeah yeah. And then he just said, okay? <laughs> Basically. He said he he was like, I'll get you girls an audition. And he was like, true to his word. It was like eight months later. He called us in for an audition. Were you like, oh, well, I guess it's not happening. And then he called and you're like, oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. We were like, we were trying so hard to get in touch with him to like make it like official yeah. for those eight months. Like trying uh-huh. so, but he's like impossible to get in touch with some, for some reason. <laughs> and, really? Yeah. We were like. Did you have to go through his publicist? It, no, we were sort of just trying to go through like friends of friends of friends to okay. like. But even like I don't know, it was we were just being really crazy. But he I mean, like, I think it everyone. Us, so. I mean, I wanted to be man when I heard about it. I was like, how can I get a hold? So yeah. I totally like. It's amazing that you you know got that. So then you did the audition, and what'd you have to do? Um, I actually um, Phil Spector wrote me a love letter from prison. Phil Spector, yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> how did he find you? I wrote him first. Okay. But I've had a prison pen pal too. Oh yeah. <laughs> I I yeah, I messaged like a random guy off like a prison pen pal website. Oh really? And then I got scared that he had my address. Oh yeah. I, I my dad has a PO box, so I always send people to my dad's PO box. Yeah, I should have <laughs> I should have had a PO box. It was yeah. like my apartment <laughs> in New York. Yeah, it, um but yeah, I read my full spectre love letter. And then we got the oh, part. because there was I just, like things I just like that... pretended that Manson wrote it to me, and then I was like, "Just kidding, that's not from Manson, it's from Phil Spector." No big <laughs> deal. And they were like, "Um, you're insane." Were you nervous for the audition, or were you like, "Whatever, this is so much fun"? Um, no, yeah, I was so nervous. <laughs> and then when you found out, um, were you like, "This is unreal"? Yeah, I mean, it's it a was, really it's just like good journey. Yeah, it, you know, it was. It was like a from from when he announced the movie to when the movie came out. It was two a two year thing. Oh wow! So it was like a it was like a two year mission for me and my sister. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. And it was it was it was like a moment when I went and saw it in the theater, and then I was like, my work here is done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like mission accomplished. What was it like being on set? Were you like, I can't believe he's directing me right now? Um. Yeah, it was like, I don't know. I it's, when something that crazy is happening, it's sort of just like, okay, well, this is this is happening. It's pretty pretty much. But I don't know. It's hard. And yeah, I I don't even know how to put it into words. Yeah. <laughs> was it a cool experience? Was there like a cool energy on the set? Yeah, I was actually, I was actually thinking recently. I was like looking at a bunch of movies I've been in, and I was like. You know, I have, I work, I work really well. Like when I'm, when I'm acting, not directing, I always work the best with women directors mm-hmm. for some reason. Cause I feel like with men, most of the time there have been ex- exceptions, but they're either really condescending or inappropriate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Quentin's one of the few male directors I worked with that's been, who was like the coolest ever. Wow. So, <laughs> that's, I, I was just. What made him movie. so cool? Um, besides just being him, yeah, was there just anything like, just like you know the really obvious stuff? He's just like really passionate, mm-hmm. enthusiastic, really nice. Um, he treats everyone on set equally. Um, I don't know. It's just yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was so awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I love it. Um, so you. M- made your first film when you were how old um i made it when i was 17 and it um 17 like right before i turned 18 came out when i was 19 um it was something i just made because i was like oh i should i it was my goal like when i graduated high school i was like okay i'll i'll just make a movie and basically i was like i'll make a movie and give it to trauma Mm -hmm. (laughs) because you were a fan of the, the stuff that they made 
yeah, a fan and also watching some of the stuff, like, if they'll put out this, then they'll put out mm-hmm. the I make. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then so I was like, I'll just make it as, like, practice. And I did, and my plan worked with that, too. I was just like, at first Lloyd said no, and then I was like, nah, come on, just, just do it. And he's like, okay. Really? <laughs> it was really easy. So you made it first and then asked them yeah. to, like, put their name on it. Yeah, well, they did more than put their name on it. They they essentially bought I'm doing oh. I'm doing quotes right okay. now. Yeah. That you can't see because it was the contract was like one dollar, we buy it, <laughs> but you, you keep twenty percent of the profits, which uh-huh. I've never gotten because they rip people off. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> Damn, um, I spent four dollars on it this morning <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> it's okay. It goes to Lloyd Kaufman's pocket. Oh, okay. Um uh and uh yeah, but they they do they ought a really good job of like getting it out there. And they did like a Blu ray release, so it's like sold at like Barnes and Noble and crap. It wow, like it like really so cool. surprises me how many people have seen that movie because I'm like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I thought it was really cool. <laughs> and it was very funny. <laughs> the Cato okay, first of all Oh yeah, the that's like the That was the, the only funniest part. <laughs> so first of all, Cato Kalen is in it. Yeah. As a caveman. The, the how movie's that... called BC Butcher, I didn't say. Oh, be but... sorry. BC Butcher. How did, where did you get the idea? So it's a comedy horror. Mm-hmm. Of, and just quickly, what's it about? Um, It's the world's first prehistoric slasher. Love it. Were you into <laughs> prehistoric stuff? Or was it just, um, like, yeah, how did you well, come up with I, that? I'm just really into campy stuff. And okay. I'm just like, there haven't, there hasn't been a caveman movie in a while, really. It, yeah. it used to be almost, not, not really, because there weren't too many, but it was like a, a genre of you know like 60s cave women cavemen mm-hmm. um but yeah sort of a forgotten one quick side note have you seen serial mom yeah <laughs> that's my favorite campy movie <laughs> it's so good yeah i, I love it mom. yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> a lot not a lot of people have seen it it's a it's a classic it's a classic yeah it's john waters yeah he comes here every Christmas. He does something here at the comedy store. Oh, really? Yeah, and... every Christmas he it's like an evening with John Waters. That's and he, awesome. He's... Yeah, it does like a whole hour. That's great. I love him. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, so the movie. Okay. So, I wrote down a couple of notes of things I just <laughs> wanted to briefly tell you. Okay. I love the kill them all part in black and white. <laughs> that was the coolest part for me. <laughs> was did you okay? Yeah. What were you inspired by for that part? Like, was that something that you've seen, like, that kind of vibe before? Like, with the sound oh, off and her laughing? Actually, there is a movie that I was not I just remembered. I totally forgot. But there's a movie. There's a giallo Italian horror movie called Cold Eyes of Fear, which mm-hmm. they did a part like that, which I, I liked a lot. I love it. <laughs> it was so cool. And then you did, like, a little more stuff of, like, the black and white stuff with all the girls laughing together. That I, that was my favorite part of it. It Thank just you. was, like, creepy and really funny. I liked how the band, like, did a music video in the middle of the movie. Yeah. Is that something that other movies had done before? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's, it's, it's, it's actually funny because it, it does seem like it's an homage to the monkeys but that okay. was that was like right before i really got into the monkeys and now i'm like the world's number one monkeys fan really oh yeah. i met one of them which one <sighs> what are mickey dolan's my cousin? yeah mickey, Dolan. mickey dolan's <laughs> i met him at a bar in new york like a couple of years ago <laughs> that's very cool yeah i didn't know who i was talking to but then he told me who he was and i was like i know that name and then i was like oh <laughs> um he was hitting on me Oh, yeah. Um, I liked how the band <laughs> was jumping up and down on, was that a trampoline? But yeah. you didn't show that it was a trampoline. These yeah. are just things I thought I would tell you I liked. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, and the band, and I love the Alley Oop song. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a great song. That was cool. Yeah, the music was really cool. I, like, the cool music really, uh, like, you know, marries everything well together. Thank you. Yeah, it. I don't know. It's, it surprises me. People Come. people have written like really serious essays on the movie and stuff. Really? <laughs> I, like fan letters? No, not even like essays. Oh, really? <laughs> the, okay. Yeah. I think I just go, didn't the, hear what you said. This is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is unrelated, but really funny. I was in Detroit recently doing a screening of music videos I've directed and, um, 
I have a I have a a wall in my house that says I love Anne Frank. <laughs> okay. <laughs> which is a long story. But why not? Okay. We love her. Everyone loves her. Um but this girl came up to me and was like, because I have a photo of it on my Instagram, and I guess she wrote her thesis in college about the Holocaust and media and centered her paper around my wall that says that. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, what? So do you have, like, a lot of super fans that just show up to your event? Yeah. I'm not saying she was a super fan, but. I mean, that's really funny, but I don't, but she wrote yeah. an essay based on your wall. Yeah. Did she give it to you? No. You didn't read it? Uh uh-uh. uh. You were like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, that's the coolest thing ever. That is cool. <laughs> um, whoa. What yeah. other weird things have happened like that to you? Um, did you come across the essays? Did people send them to you? Um, not always. Some sometimes, yeah. Some sometimes, yeah. I, I don't know. You know, there's all sorts of weirdos like me and my sister, but but good weirdos. Yeah. How and, did and it feel weirdos, seeing that? It was seeing what? Seeing that yeah. people were having reactions like that when it was just oh, like something um, that you just wanted to make as a goal. Um, I was just like, why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's a I, humble answer. So, like, um not not that I'm saying I think I'm uh I don't have anything to say that it just my that was my first f- real thing of making anything uh I just finished my second feature which I'm very proud of and um I don't know when it'll come out but mm-hmm. because talking to different people right now but I'm very very proud of that and I'm really proud of a lot of the music videos I've made too um, yeah. Is there anything you can tell us about the second feature? Um, sure. Sure. It's like a. It's like made in the style of Faces of Death, but it's based on a monkey's song. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you film it? Um, all over L.A., New York, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Las Vegas, Mexico City. Wow. Joshua Tree. And then. Do you just direct it, or besides writing it, are you in it too? Uh, yeah, I'm in it. I wrote it, directed it, did cinematography for mm, almost half of it. Maybe wow. I had I had a DP too, but since uh since it was like all over because you the want country, specific like, shots. Uh no, just like sometimes he wouldn't be there, and sometimes mm-hmm. he would. We and we have very different styles too, so you can always tell like when I shot it and when he shot it. What's and more then my like boyfriend yours? Shot some of it too. Do you have like a signature style? Um, I I think so, mm-hmm. but I don't think people know it much. You would yet notice because people think of me as you know BC butcher, but uh-huh. I I don't know. It it'll it'll be different when the movie comes out and people will see it. So I noticed <laughs> a lot of people went to that premiere. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Did you know all of those people? No, I I uh. I was I was really crazy about inviting people. So the Oscars were happening like a few weeks before and there were like a lot of like crazed people like trying to like get a look at the red carpet and stuff. Uh-huh. And I went around to all of them with little flyers I made. I was like, Well, if you want to attend a real red carpet premiere, you should come to this. Yeah. And I got like a hundred random people. That's to show really up. smart though. <laughs> That's I, a really good idea. <laughs> Thanks. I'm always trying to find, trying to find ways to hustle like that. And yeah, it worked. I like that. What are more hustling tips? I want one. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> what about I getting? I can give you a, a million because, um, I just make my money hustling. I, I don't. So I make the majority of my money directing music videos. Mm-hmm. But usually, weirdly, when it happens, it'll be like. A month where I'm directing like three music videos, and then a month where I'm directing zero. So mm-hmm. the months that I'm directing zero, or so I make my money directing music videos for acting. The months that I'm uh, not directing anything, usually me and my sister, we always like find some app that's offering like referral money. So we have all these people sign up for an app, or we like I don't oh, know, we sell what is things that? online. Oh, just like or, little like, side jobs. Yeah, we just you know figure things out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you have very cool style. Thank you. Do you like go around to a lot of thrift shops and stuff 
favorite ones in LA? Uh, not really. I I don't really care about clothes that much. Okay. <laughs> I sort of just wear hand me downs. I um, I don't know. And another good another good money making tip. Though, yeah, too. we love scheming on the pod. Find furniture on the sidewalk. Take it into your house, put it on offer up, sell it for like forty dollars. Wow, we do that a lot. We do. <laughs> do you have a pickup truck? No, oh. we don't. I don't even have a car. Okay, <laughs> you just Uber it home. You're like, oh, a desk. Know. Let's call an Uber. Oh, I'm just to carry it home. That's a good idea. <laughs> There's all sorts of things you can do if you're if you're creative. You got to be creative when you're broke. Yeah. There was this one app that was uh, it was giving me fifteen dollars every time I got someone to sign up for it. Uber Eats. No, it was this app called Dosh, and I okay. made a thousand dollars in really? a couple days. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> How did you get people to sign up for it? Just on Instagram. That's smart. DMing people? No, I just put it in my story. I was like, everyone sign up for this app, and then harassed all my friends too. And then mm-hmm. you're like, ka-ching. Yeah, it, yeah. What about uh, any good. tips on getting financing for stuff you want to make? I have none because I self-funded my feature mm-hmm. which is also I'm always broke because every time I get money I just spend it on things I want to make well that's a good way to something to put your money towards <laughs> yeah. you know I don't really care so you know I don't I don't care about money I just you know as long as I can pay my rent and you know you can always shoplift food mm-hmm. which do you uh-huh <laughs> which I don't have any problem with I here I will say this I will never ever 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 shoplift from a small business and i think that people that do are being very counterproductive mm-hmm. uh because i think i think that shoplifting from big corporations like whole foods exactly is actually really good for the economy okay because many reasons but the main one being you know it's it's in a in your very small way you're balancing out wealth distribution Mm -hmm. it's you know robin hood type thing yeah but you know if if someone who doesn't have that much money is gaining wealth by not having to spend money on food and they're gaining food and a corporation is losing money that's a good thing Mm. no i see what you mean (laughs) and also you know it's food you just have to be carry carry a tote bag because even if someone sees you do it you just be like oh i'm just carrying around tote right because it looks like it's environmentally conscious but I've never even had someone stop me with that. Cause That's you smart. Just have, you just have to... I carry a tote bag as a purse. Like, it looks like the grocery bag that uh-huh. you're going to be... Yeah, and then you basically just go down an aisle where there isn't a camera. There aren't many people. I always like to go in the middle of the night, and then you just you slyly just put it in your bag. Have you ever gotten caught? No. I got Fingers caught crossed. shoplifting when I was younger, <laughs> so it scared me from Neiman Marcus. I didn't understand that the huge circles on the ceiling were cameras oh, and I'm I'm stealing <laughs> all this shit. I've never shoplifted clothes. I only shoplift food. Oh, okay. Or like bathroom supplies. Food makes sense. <laughs> Did you see Shoplifters? Was that the name of it? That Japanese movie? No. Oh, it was really good. Yeah. Yeah. It was all about that kind of shit. Um, but I recommend people do that who are broke to shoplift their food. Yeah, that's a good idea. And it's it's not immoral. It's actually, mm-hmm. it's like, you know what is immoral? People hoarding wealth. That's that's what's actually immoral. Um, Whole Foods connected to Amazon, you know, like Jeff Bezos, richest man in the entire world. You think that's wrong to it's steal a jar of peanut butter from Jeff Bezos? Okay. Right. Like, <laughs> well, that's, that's your hang up. <laughs> <laughs> So, did you edit your first movie? Do no. You, do you work on any of the editing stuff? Now I do. Okay. I wish I would have edited it, because it would have been a really different movie. The editor, really? I think, did a really good job, but we... It was a very different style than I imagined. Uh, he was the editor of some Comedy Central show. I can't really remember at the moment. I, I really liked what he did, but I had it totally different in my head of what it was going to be. I edit all my stuff now. Mm-hmm. And, just uh, to have creative control more and just yeah. kind of know what you want just because yeah i'm a control freak and yeah i understand that i'm like that too. I like to shoot it too and mm-hmm. do everything basically yeah if i ever make like any little videos on my phone and i just edit, i prefer to do it all myself because it's just like an aesthetic and yeah. a taste and you can control exactly like you know in your head exactly what you're looking for and with timing and everything yeah I've also been really into editing lately more than I ever was and how important it is and I have like 
I always pay attention to editing now, and all of my favorite movies pretty much now all have very uh, particular editing styles. Um, F for Fake is, like, one of my favorite movies of all time, and that's, like, the most creatively put together movie ever made. The editing is, like, really, really insane. I recommend that's an Orson Welles movie. Okay, Um, I haven't seen it. Uh, I feel so embarrassed. I need to, like, (laughs) you need to give me a list of movies to watch, too. Okay, well, um, there's a movie called Bone, which I really like, which has really crazy editing. Also, um, anything sort of, like... I don't know, just any like sort of experimental editing, which mm-hmm. I think a lot of it started with French New Wave, Jean Luc Godard's movies had really crazy editing, and then it like seeped into the mainstream with like Bonnie and Clyde. Mm-hmm. And the editing's uh, almost schizophrenic at some points. Not 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 that it's seeped into all mainstream stuff, but you know, it's a uh, it's more accepted now to see a movie where the editing isn't super straightforward and Mm -hmm. yeah that like makes me think of like in the movie bc butcher with like the (laughs) random like little eye thing it was like these (laughs) eyeballs from the side oh okay when she gets her eye stabbed out i don't know there was just like these like two little eyes at one point and i was like what the fuck I don't know. And I like how you didn't really show like that much of like the, mer- like you did to a point, but also there's like a lot you didn't see. Oh, like gore stuff. Yeah, yeah. I've never really been super into gore. I even though I, I showed I showed a I directed like one scene first before I did the rest of the movie, and I showed it to Herschel Gordon Lewis, who's one of my favorite directors ever. He directed Blood Feast, which is. It's the first movie ever to feature excessive gore. It's 1963. Um, and he was like, you need more gore. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that was so beautiful. What are gore tips? <laughs> um, I don't know if I can give any. I feel like I'm really bad at it. Yeah. I always just like always just end up doing something myself. And I... it doesn't always look real, but sometimes it does. Sometimes. I don't know. I can hire someone. <laughs> yeah. I was watching that Spielberg documentary, and I feel like one of the things that I like that he said that stuck out to me was how it's kind of scary, like, when you can't see what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, it's suspenseful. Like, the scariest stuff is what you don't see. Yeah. Hitchcock was... Which I agree with. Master in a way of that. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, never really revealing... I I like a lot of times with scary movies, like the monster itself can be like an issue to me. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm like, oh, that's what it looks like, or like, <laughs> like what do you think makes a good monster? <laughs> um, so or do you think it should be I, revealed? I think, I think a good monster is something that's like that's something that's iconic. Mm-hmm. Where you see a picture of it, and you're like, oh, that's from this movie. Oh, okay. Not like, oh, that looks like that could be from five different things you mm, know? something unique yeah that's what that yeah. doesn't look like a mix between things yeah yeah I'll always strive to make something new yeah <laughs> i like that um is your second thing a horror movie as well uh in a way because it's about uh teenage girls and trouble they get into not Ooh. not not a not a standard horror movie but it will be shocking <laughs> <laughs> i liked in one of the music videos the one the one that was kind of like the satanic one mm-hmm. with the cheerleader uh, yeah, and the collapsing scenery modern world that was cool do you come up with all the ideas for the videos um it's uh it depends it's just it depends on the project sometimes the band will have an idea some uh sometimes they'll be like do whatever you want Sometimes they'll come up with something with me. It's always always different. I just love I love the visual of cheerleaders. There's something so cool about that, like cost or uniforms, yeah, it's, like it's, yeah, the uniforms. uniforms. Uniforms are always really good. Yeah, I love uniforms. Um, so I've heard something about satanic. <laughs> I've heard some satanic rumors. Mm-hmm. About me. Yeah. <laughs> what can you tell me about that? Um. Well. To, to, 
to believe in any of the um satanic stuff that people associate with say satanism like the devil and mm-hmm. silly things like that um is a bit absurd because to believe in the devil and to believe in hell you'd have to believe in god and heaven which i don't do mm-hmm. so that's part of satanism is uh really just christianity mm-hmm. <laughs> which is silly um i think that anton levey um was starting a movement where it was uh he he involved the christian stuff to sort of shock people to be the anti-christian opposite do whatever you want think for yourself which was which is like to christians really righteous that's really you're not righteous that's really crazy you, you shouldn't you know, you shouldn't think for yourself. You should only do things for God. You shouldn't. You shouldn't yeah. live for yourself. You should live for a higher being. But it's like, I don't know. I, I'm. I would never call myself a Satanist. I think that's really silly. <laughs> but I think that Anton Lavey was, uh, um, had a really cool thing that he did. Are you involved in any of that, like witchy stuff? Uh, I feel like there's like all these people in LA who like get together and do spells and stuff kind of a th- question i ask all the time on this podcast i mean not really oh. i think i feel like the girls that <laughs> never mind <laughs> <laughs> that do that um, and they're just they're like i'm a witch <laughs> right it's like a trend like, amongst like, young yeah. girls have you noticed that yeah yeah they're what like, is that they like do something one time they're like yeah you know it's like a couple of my it's, friends it's pretty weird but <laughs> yeah a couple of my friends I've seen like pictures on their Instagram at stuff or they're like it's a full moon and then there's like a cauldron smoking and I'm like what the fuck are they doing it's either like I'm a witch or it's like a trend now for girls to be like I'm a fairy oh <laughs> I don't really know much about the fairy thing that's What's even the- worse yeah it is what's the fairy thing do you have to be by a brook <laughs> We don't know it's really horrifying yeah I don't, I don't like it what do fairies do is that more like white magic stuff they're like i'm helpful i don't know i, I don't i don't even know <laughs> it just grosses me out yeah it's bizarre it's just like childish <laughs> i don't know childish <laughs> um so when and when does your new movie come out i don't know you don't know yet you're in the- i'm almost done editing it right now and you know, there's sound stuff being done in score. Uh-huh. Um, hopefully soon. Okay, cool. We'll see. And then do you have any, like, okay, so two movies is obviously, like, very awesome, you know, shorts, music videos. Is, do you have any, like, big career goals or, like, a trajectory you want for yourself? Um, Yeah, I have pretty much, like, the next ten movies I want to do. Really? Already to go. Yeah. There's a few other really big goals. I don't. I don't really want to say them though, because I don't want anyone to. Okay. To do it before I do. Okay. <laughs> but they probably wouldn't anyways. But just be safe. Okay, so you're just okay. So <laughs> then you're just gonna get that started sense, on the next one, oh, essentially yeah, after this, and then I've sort of like accidentally already started it. Okay. <laughs> um. Like yeah. writing it, you mean? No, well, it's already written. Oh, like, okay. Doing pre-production. Cool. I'm like, S- stop it. You have to finish your other one first. And, yeah. But, but you like, want to get started on something but... else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good, though, that you... Okay, did you ever drink or party or anything? Or did you just mostly no. get into film stuff? I... See, I wish I did what you did. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't do well with any of that stuff. Yeah. It's just I'm not... My body's not meant for that. That's I, cool though, honestly. I I I wish I could get into psychedelics, but I, my brain can't handle it. It's too crazy. It's terrifying. I yeah. hate mushrooms. I've only ever like, had bad trips. On me anything, too. So. Me too. I hate hallucinogenics. <laughs> yeah, and then everything else is just gross. Like me. I'm not comfortable with the wall breathing. You know, <laughs> like that doesn't make me feel good. I don't yeah, understand I, why I, people I, like yeah, that. I, I just don't like the feeling. Of, <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah. Well, I know that you love horror movies, but what scares you? Mm, gluten. <laughs> gluten. But, like, for example, like, I'm terrified of clowns and spiders and dolls. 
do any of those terrify you or do you have anything like that that's scary to you that would freak you out gluten sounds like a joke but i'm I'm not joking uh almost every single night i have a nightmare that i like accidentally eat gluten oh wow it scares me that bad are you gonna make a movie about gluten as a monster no that'd be dumb (laughs) (laughs) i yeah it's a I I have celiac disease, which is why that's scary. Because yeah, that, that would it would basically it, it's just it's just horrible. But I honestly, it's 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 do clowns so not bad. scare you? No, I think clowns are stupid. Really, <laughs> dolls? I don't like people who paint their face. Gross me out. Yeah, I know. I don't like anything that wears more makeup than me. It's just like, yeah, it's like gross. It's like it's not cool. Um, uh, I don't know. Aren't really scary. What about advice if someone wants to start filmmaking and like basically what's your advice to someone who says they want to be doing what you're doing? They think it's cool, but they don't know where to start. Um, first of all, I want to say that if you don't have like if you're not someone who has like a compulsion to tell stories or you, this is not, basically for not, me, by the way. <laughs> okay. If it's not if it's not something that it's like you, there it's like the purpose of your life and like if it's not that if you're not that passionate about it then just don't do it. Okay, but what if you have that itch inside of you? If you and you're really have that itch, to do it. you genuinely do, then just do it and don't wait for people to give you money. It would be cool if you had money, but it's just like. The, the, to do things in the so-called proper way is um, often soulless. And, mm-hmm. uh, it can still look cool on a cheaper budget. Yeah, it's just like, if you really want to tell a story, then go tell it. You shouldn't have to depend on other people. Mm-hmm. Um, That's why I feel like I should just get a camera myself instead of having to feel like I'm going to pay someone to film it for me. Yeah, or, or also it's like everyone here has a camera. Just like put something up on Craigslist or something. That's how I got the DP for BC Butcher. Oh, really? Yeah, I just put up an ad on Craigslist. I was like, who has a 16 millimeter camera that wants to shoot a feature? And I got like four people. And wow. I was like 17 years old, like interviewing people to shoot my movie. <laughs> Were all the people interesting people who yeah. wanted to? Yeah, they're, they all had... they're all people that had cameras. And uh-huh. it, it's like, yeah. It's... So how do you edit stuff on film? Well, you get it uh, scanned, so it's 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 pretty much just the same as editing digitally. I don't edit um, analog because okay. I, there, I, no matter what, at some point with film nowadays, you're gonna have to get it transferred to digital anyway. So you might as well get it transferred immediately, and you can edit digitally because it's it's by far the easiest way. Editing oh. not digitally is like yeah. first of all, it's really expensive because you, no one would ever edit straight from the negative. So you'd have to make a print made out of the negative, which is like thousands thousands of dollars and edit off the the work print that's what they're mm-hmm. called and it's just like why would you do that <laughs> i liked how your movie had that like little flash of the little white thing in the corner that you could tell it was on film do you know what i'm talking about like you know how like sometimes <laughs> it like uh there's like a little spot yeah, yeah there's you know there's always you know scratches and grain and i don't know so, it just yeah. looks so cool to me <laughs> Thanks. yeah yeah my the the one that i just finished my camera the the, the first one was shot on an airflex sr2 which is like a really fancy mm. camera, but this one was shot on a Aton LTR, which is a much older camera, and also wasn't. It's a. It was a camera. It was previously owned by the NFL. It wasn't really made for like mm-hmm. proper cinematography, more like sports news stuff like that. So it's not like the greatest. Uh, I think it's pretty great, um, but it, it's uh, it's way more fucked up looking. The film, it's like there's scratches and every all stuff all over. I like it. the way that looks though. <laughs> I love it. Looks it. Cool. It, it's it's so it's so beautiful. The image breathes and it's mm. a, it's it moves and it's not like it doesn't make everyone look so ugly like digital does. It's I don't know. I just just seeing all the footage I get back on film, it, it's it's all it's beautiful all always. It's it the colors and the way it makes people look it makes everyone look beautiful and it's just like i don't know why anyone would ever want to shoot digital it's just always people look so nasty on it i agree i mean things definitely look a lot cooler but mm-hmm. so you can't watch the playback though like you just have to trust um right when you're shooting on they, film well, with one of those cameras you you can get a camera that has things you can plug in where you could like plug in a screen to watch what you're doing oh I, you 
Did I don't. Just okay. Because it would be. First of all, I shoot like guerrilla style, so I'm always like running around shooting places where I shouldn't. I, I, uh-huh. don't, I can't have like a little tent set up where I can be yeah, watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, doing. that's how you get cooler stuff, <laughs> yeah. and you don't have to pay for everything. You, you, so you can on film, but not all the time. I, I never have. Actually, no. There's one music video where I did where I had a screen set up, but I just like I never even looked at it because I was just like, always looking through the lens anyway. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you just have to like trust that you get things. Mm-hmm. So and, you and only sometime- do one take. Um, because you feel like you're gonna waste film. Yeah, film film is expensive. Um, I don't know. I don't. That also. Yeah, I, I like to get things in one take because it's always like, I I always, I try to get the most natural mm-hmm. stuff. I always uh, I really like to. I guess it also depends on the project, but I like to improvise a lot with actors. Like you have to say this and this. Everything else, just like be yourself, say whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's usually when you get the best stuff, because then it. Then it seems like the characters are real. It's not all coming from one mind where it's like you write everyone. It's like it's a bunch of different minds put together. Mm-hmm. Do and you it do seems more authentic that way? Do you do rehearsals before? Uh huh. Yeah. It, or I don't know. That also depends too. I in my new movie, there's like a bunch of interview style scenes too, where I basically just like have the camera rolling and let them talk and say whatever they want, and then editing, I just take bits of it. Oh yeah, because then that's more like natural too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. It, yeah, it always just depends on what I'm shooting. But I, I don't know. There's there's also stuff where I have, like, heavy rehearsals. Not not that often, though. Mm-hmm. Do you think that people should start with something smaller, like a short, or just go for the whole... Is it, like, daunting to start with a um, whole movie? Do you th- I mean... Or do you think there's no rule, really? If if there's a feature you really want to make, then you should make a feature, you know? Mm-hmm. But if, if you have an idea for a short and you want to make a short, I don't know. Make Just it. go with what you want to do. It's not... Yeah. It doesn't have to be a whole fucking thing. Yeah. It, I don't know. Um. It Also, whatever you feel like you're capable of doing, I don't know. And also, it's not... It's not always like the short builds up to the feature. Mm-hmm. I, like... I don't know. I had an idea for a short recently, and I made the short even though I've already made features, it's, you know, it's... it's Whatever uh, you feel like doing. Yeah. I think uh, as long as filmmakers are thinking of it as art rather than business, Mm. then it's all good in my book. Yeah. Otherwise, like, I don't really care and I don't want to give advice. (laughs) No, I like that. That makes sense. Okay, cool. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, what are some cool horror movies that I should watch? Or cool old movies that uh, you think... Ev- like, what's a couple things that you think everyone should see? Oh, uh, everyone should see. Okay, well, I'll, how about I talk about... There's a movie which relates back to our initial conversation about New Jersey um, that I saw recently, which I really love. And it's called Atlantic City. Okay. <laughs> and it's just so beautiful. It's... Burt Lancaster and Susan Sarandon and it's like such a warm comforting beautiful movie one that you could watch over and over again like Breakfast at Tiffany's or something and I really love it I'll just say that okay I'll check it out (laughs) thank you so much for coming on and um where can people find you on social media um I only have an Instagram at Kansas Bowling someone has a fake Twitter for me it's not me okay Uh, (laughs) and I have a website kansas-bowling.com where you can see all my music videos cool well thank you so much for coming on and um thank you guys for listening please remember to subscribe rate and review to my podcast thanks